hope you're all doing very well. This lesson is going to be an interesting one, of course. In today's discussion, we'll be looking at preparation of gases. We'll look at how the gases are collected. We'll look at the um, method of collection, as I said. We'll look at the properties, physical properties and chemical properties. Then we'll also look at some apparatus that are used in preparation of gases. And then uh, we'll take the gases one by one, look at how it is being prepared. Hope you enjoyed this lesson. Before we look at the method of collection, we have to note this. Let's note this down before we move on. In chemistry, they can ask to find the molecular mass. Let's see how to find molecular mass before I introduce you to the collection of gases. In um, for to find molecular mass, molecular mass, sometimes they call it the molar mass. So let's look at the molecular mass. Molecular mass at molecular mass or when you talk of molar mass. Molar mass. Now when you talk of molar mass, we are looking at the individual uh, atomic masses in uh, we, we are looking at the summation of the individual atomic masses. For instance, if you take hydrogen for instance, you know the molar mass of hydrogen is if they tell you hydrogen is equal to one and then chlorine is let's say equal to a 17 then we have um let's say we have nitrogen to be nitrogen to be 14 then we have um let's say carbon dioxide carbon dioxide uh, to be c to be 24 we have c to be let's say oxygen here let's take up oxygen oxygen to be 16 okay if oxygen is 16 um we we'll have that of um carbon dioxide to be 12 and they ask us to find the molecular mass molecular mass these are the atomic these are atomic masses or their masses so if you have to find the molar mass you map molar mass molar mass let's look at how to find molar mass so if i have a compound like h2 what's the molar mass we have two of the h so the molar mass will become one plus one would you give what two because we have two of the hydrogen do you get it then if you have something like hcl what will be the molar mass the molar mass here is going to be the summation of the H here is going to be 1. Then we have the chlorine to be 17. So we are going to get 18 as the molar mass. We can add the unit which is gram per mole. Alright, so if you have a compound like CO2, 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 what will it be? CO2 here, we have carbon to be 12. We have oxygen. There are two of them. So it means two of the oxygen, two of the oxygen, which is 16. So you are going to get 32 plus 12, which is going to give you 44. Have you gotten it? And then what if they ask you to find the molar mass of NH3, NH3, NH3? We have nitrogen to be 14, right? And we have three of the hydrogens, three of the hydrogens. So if you sum up this, you are going to get 17. Why am I introducing you? We are looking at a collection of gases, but now I'm introducing you to how to find the molar mass. If you know the molar mass of this one, you can know the method of collection, whether it's going to be upward delivery or downward delivery. So if you know the molar mass, you can use the molar mass to depict whether the gas will be collected at upward delivery or downward delivery, upward displacement of air or downward displacement of air. So please take note of the molar mass. So when you are talking of molar mass, you are looking at the summation. Now, let me quickly introduce you to the uh, various types of uh, collection of gases. We can have downward delivery or upward displacement of air. We also have um, that of uh, upward living uh, downward displacement of air. So, if you look at this particular one, you see, for you to know this one, the standard molar mass we are looking at, okay, air. So, if the molar mass is greater than 28.8, then we said it's the standard air. So, let's take, let's say the molar mass of air is 28.8. So, you are saying that anything that is less than this particular number will be less than, it's not heavy. It's less heavier right it's less heavier than anything that will be anything that will be greater than this or say it is very heavy right so before we look at the methods now which of them do you think is less heavy than this you see hydrogen gas it's less heavier look at the molar mass 2 and 20 it's less heavy so if i take something that is less heavy will, and you put something that is less heavy in water what happened you see that it will not sink down right it's rather float so we are saying this one definitely i know this one be upward delivery now if the thing is heavy what do you think in our own number sense when you take stone that is heavy it will go down right so don't forget this one this is the molar mass 
the molecular mass of s we are going to compare this with air okay so look at the molar masses and compare with air and then we can depict whether uh, this gas is less heavier or heavier than uh, heavier than air and then with that in, with that uh, idea we can tell we can tell the method of collection so let's zoom into the collection of gases all right so the method of collection we're going to look at three method of collection we have the first one downward delivery or upward displacement of air and we have upward delivery or downward displacement of air and then we have collection over water so let's start with the first one when we talk of downward delivery or upward displacement of air is when we use one of them if the thing is downward delivery then it means there is upward displacement of air what you have to know is that downward is something when you have for the delivery look at something heavy and let's take water for instance if something is heavy and you put it in water what will happen something that is heavy and you put it in water it will move down right so downward delivery means that the gas should have a relative molar mass that is greater than that of air because the thing is heavier than air it will not float right it will sink right get it that way if the thing is heavier than air it will sink it will not float things that float mean they are less heavy than air heavier than air so for down delivery remember that the gas should have relative molar mass that is greater than air or that is denser or that is heavier than air and how do you know if the molar mass is greater than 28.8 you will say that that gas is heavier than air and because it is moving down downward delivery the air moves opposite so the air will move upward you see bubbles coming up because the thing is sinking down right bubbles coming up so we said that if you have downward delivery then there will be upward displacement of air air will come up if i move down air moves up that's how it is then for upward delivery you will see that there are going to be downward displacement of air if the thing is floating up the thing is not heavy what happen it will float up so there will be upward delivery upward delivery so we say if we have upward delivery we are going to have downward displacement of air the air will move down whilst the thing is floating up because it's less heavy it will move up and then the air will move down have you seen it so if gas is having relative molar mass okay that are less lower than 28.8 we said that gas is less heavier than air and so what will happen because it's less heavy to float right so we say upward delivery upward delivery and then downward displacement of air then we also have collection of our water so usually gases that are not soluble in water we can collect them over water if they are not soluble in water it's not dissolved in water so if i don't dissolve in water i can still pass through water right but if it's soluble in water it will dissolve in water and cancel the gas again so gases that are not soluble in water are collected over water but not this one carbon dioxide even though it is soluble in water we still collect it over water it's okay that is exception that you have to take note of now before we look at the examples of we have some examples there. Before we look at some example of the upward delivery and downward delivery, let me see. We I thought you had to find the molecular molar mass or the molar mass. Now, if you have to find the molecular mass or the molar mass, now let's say if the carbon dioxide is having 44, the molar mass is 44, will it be upward delivery or downward delivery? Because 44 is bigger than 28.8, it is heavy, right? So because it's heavy, it's moved down. So downward delivery. So we have carbon dioxide here as what? As what? Uh, college, uh, downward delivery. What of SO2? SO2 is 64, and 64 is bigger than air, so it will move down. It will be heavy, so it will move down. So, downward delivery. So, we have SO2 as another example of the downward delivery. Then we have that of if you have hydrogen, which is H2, it's less than it's less lower than 28.8, so it, it will float. So, upward delivery and then downward displacement of air. So, we have hydrogen here as an example. Then, if HCl, please take note of this one HCl, the hydrogen is. Molecular mass is one. Chlorine here is having 35.5. Is that okay? So 5.5. So 36.5 here. We we'll say it is what? It's heavier. So we have this one to be what? HCl here. And then if I have nitrogen, it is 17. 17 is lower than this one. So it will up, up. So upward delivery. We we'll have HCl as well. And so these are some of few examples of downward delivery and upward delivery. Don't forget, if the thing is heavy, it will move down. So downward delivery. And so if it moves downward, then the air will come up, so upward displacement of air. Let's look at some diagram to represent the downward delivery and then the upward delivery as well. Alright, so you will see that in this um, particular one, gas is moving down. So it's going to be downward delivery. It means this gas is definitely heavier than air, so downward delivery. And then, so this is a gas evolved. 
that's the gas produced the gas is coming down so air will move upward so upward displacement of air in this case you see the gas moving up the gas that they are preparing is moving up so you are saying upward delivery and then the air will moves down so downward displacement of air so this is a gas that is involved that is evolved when you are preparing it so that is the upward delivery and then downward displacement of air we have downward delivery as the first one and then upward displacement of air as well all right so we'll look at the physical properties of gases now we saw that in another physical properties we'll be discussing the color of the gas so we should talk about the color of the gas the smell that's in the order of the gas some have pendants although some have you know um, so pendant order so we we'll look at the uh, pungent odor. Some have the solubility in water. Whether the gas is soluble in water or not, it, it can be an a physical property. You also talk about the density of the gas. Whether the gas is denser than air or is less dense than air. I thought I thought to that one I, using the molar mass. Then you can talk of the toxicity of the gas. Whether the gas is toxic or poisonous. Then another chemical properties will be discussing the litmus test. Or whether the, so that's it. You can use the litmus test. Okay, it changes red litmus paper to blue and in that order. It's going to be a chemical property supporting combustion it's also going to whether it's bent you know to produce water then we are going to get a reaction with acid or base it's under and it can be another chemical properties then we also discuss whether the gas is a so if you are telling us whether the gas is a reducing or oxidizing agent or property then you are talking about the chemical property so in the next video i will we'll take a gas and look at how it is being prepared we'll take a gas and see the preparation we we'll look at the physical properties, the chemical properties, and the uses. Don't forget to subscribe and keep learning as well. Hope to see you excel in your examination or whatever you do that is having relation to do with these topics. Have a nice time.